In this problem, there's a Ferris wheel attached at the end of a beam, and this Ferris wheel has an eccentric mass that rotates, um, which essentially generates a um, force that is not constant in time. It varies sinusoidally with time because the Ferris wheel is rotating with a constant um, angular velocity of 15 radians per second. Um, so essentially, um, what we're asked to find is what is the steady state uh, maximum amplitude of vibration. Okay, um, so we know that this um, problem deals with um, a forced, a sinusoidally forced um, vibration um, of a simple mass uh, and spring system. Okay, so even though there's no spring in this system, a beam that um, when you um, apply a deflection to a beam, you're applying a force and it travels a set distance, um, which means uh, that it acts like a spring, okay? Um, so you can imagine um, this system as just being a 1D system uh, with a mass, a spring, and a, sorry, a spring, and a force F applied to it, okay? Um, but um, what this is what it, you can represent it as, so this is a mass. In reality, what this um, system would look like is it would deflect, and um, this here is the distance of deflection, uh, X. Okay, um, and um, you're applying a force to this um, based on this Ferris wheel over here. It's rotating, and so the force um, being applied is varying with time in a sinusoidal matter. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to find the stiffness K of the system. Okay, so this spring here has a stiffness K, and um, we are given um, the mass of this eccentric mass, and we're given how much the beam deflects from that mass, okay? Um, so we can find K um, by uh, simply um, using F equals to Kx, where we know F and we know X, so we can solve for K. Okay, so K is going to be equal to um, F over delta x, so x here is a change in distance, not just a specific distance, um, and the force is equal to mass times gravity, because it's a gravitational force, divided by delta x, which it, it we're given is 20 millimeters. Okay, so this value here is going to be uh, 20 kilograms uh, times 9.81 meters per second squared divided by delta x, which is 0 0.02 meters. I changed it from millimeters to meters. Okay, and this is equal to uh, 9,810 uh, newtons per meter. And again, depending on what gravity here, you might have some more, uh, some more accurate, a uh, more accurate K. Um, but essentially, this is the uh, spring constant of the system. Then we, um, so we've solved for k, uh, now what we need to find is the maximum amplitude at steady state. So we know um, that based on the system, we know how to solve this system. It's, um, it's just a, we can find the differential equation that's all for this system and there's two parts to the solution the um, steady state and the transient part, okay? So in this case, we're only interested in the steady state or the particular solution, um, which deals with um, the forcing frequency. Okay, so we know um, that um, the uh, amplitude, um, the particular solution part of the amplitude um, is gonna be equal to um, F naught over K divided by one minus uh, omega naught over omega n 
squared, okay, times sine of uh, omega naught t. Okay, now since we're only interested in the amplitude, uh, we're just going to take this term, so uh, x max at steady state is equal to Um, is equal to um, the absolute value of f naught over k divided by 1 minus omega naught over omega n squared. Okay, we don't care about the sine term because we're assuming that's 1. Okay, and we need to take the absolute value in case it's a negative number. Okay, so now here we can plug, um, We well, we could try and plugging things in. Um, we have k, but we don't have um, f naught, um, and we don't have the natural frequency. Okay, so first we can find the natural frequency. So the natural frequency always just depends on the mass and the spring constant. It doesn't depend on the forcing frequency. Okay, so um, we know that omega n is equal to the square root of k over m, which is equal to the square root of 9810 uh, newtons per meter divided by 20 kilograms, which is equal to uh, 22.147 radians per second. So now we have our omega n. Omega naught here, we are given, is 15 radians per second. That's the forcing frequency. Um, we have k, we just need to find f naught. Now, what is the magnitude of that force that's acting? Um, so imagine you have an eccentric mass over here. Actually, let me draw it in a different color. Um, an eccentric mass over here. Um, we're only interested in the force that is um, in this direction, okay? Um, because a force that is in the x direction doesn't cause this beam to displace up and down, okay? And we're assuming that this beam can only displace up and down. It can't be stretched left or right, okay? So when this thing rotates with a set omega, um, we have um, a force um, that we have an acceleration on, on this eccentric mass, um, and we have a force on it, okay? So this force um, is essentially, um, we are only interested in the downwards component of this force. Um, and since it's due to the omega, we have mr omega squared, okay? So that's the centripetal force. So F naught is equal to uh, mr omega squared, okay? And um, we're given all of these, so we can find the magnitude of the force, right? So the force is gonna be equal to, and this is the m, the mass of the, um, the eccentricity of the eccentric mass, okay? Not the mass of the beam. Um, so this is five kilograms times the radius, which is 0 0.15 meters, uh, times omega squared, which is 15 radians per second squared. So F naught is going to be equal to um, 168.8 newtons. Okay. And again, this is because as this thing rotates, um, we have um, an eccentric mass that is rotating and that generates a force, and we're only interested in the vertical component of the force, okay? So we only care about the force that is going that way. We don't care about the force that is going out that way, okay? And so if you think about this mass when it's rotating, this is a different time spot. Um, here, um, we're gonna only care about this force here, not this force here, okay? And so that's why this is gonna be sinusoidal because um, these two points here are going to vary by 90 degrees. And so when you have full force here, you have zero force over here. Okay. And again, this is just the formula for a centripetal force. Okay. So we have 
all of the numbers that we can plug into here. Um, so we can, oh, let me go back to black. So we can plug everything in. So the absolute value of F naught, which we said was 168.8 newtons, 168.8 newtons, divided by K, which we calculated to be 9810 newtons per meter, uh, divided by one minus, then we have omega naught, which we're given is 15 radians per second, uh, divided by omega n, which we found 22.147 radians per second, and this whole term is squared, uh, and then we again take the absolute value of it. We get that this is equal to um, 0 0.0318. And that's the amplitude. Okay, so x is equal to a 0 0.0318 meters, which is equal to 3.18 centimeters. And that is the um, solution to this problem.